So the person who, who is watching us online brought up a good point, and I think there are several people who ask this question concerning about the four cherubims at Ezekiel chapter 1 because they seem to be put in a positive light. So then you know that when I teach to you about Satan being as the fifth cherub, I taught you that he is known to be the ox. And if you see it that way, it makes a lot of sense when you look at Baal worship, bull worship, uh, especially in a lot of things concerning Egypt, mythology, and, and the conspiracy realm. But aside from that fact, we do know right here that if we're going to go by the Bible right here, it does bring up a good point, a good question. It seems right here that these four cherubims at Ezekiel chapter 1, they're pointed out as a positive aspect not as a negative aspect. And then I pointed out right here that one of these four cherubims is known to be as the ox. So because he is known to be as the ox, I tied that to Lucifer. You'll notice that. I'm not going to do it in this video. You can watch my other videos on that one. But anyways, how do we explain this one? Not only that, it seems there are some, uh, there are some beliefs out there where pe and there are questions out there where people said, don't the four cherubims match with the four Gospels? So uh, with Jesus Christ, with ox, eagle, man, and lion, matching with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then uh, I think that in, that in those aspects, they're trying to match with his deity, his kingship, his servanthood, his servanthood and his manhood. Wow. So then the ox would represent as a servant because it's known to be as a servitude. The Bible mentions about the uh, not muzzling the ox, because the ox is used for service as a servant. So then uh, that brings up a very interesting point right there. So then what are we to say concerning these parts right here? Well, in order to answer that, we can go by this. Turn to Revelation chapter 1. So here are three possibilities right here. Let's cover three possibilities. The first possibility is this, is that yes, it is used as a positive aspect because we got to understand Lucifer, he was originally created like that. So because he's originally created like that, obviously he wasn't originally created as evil. So he wasn't an evil thing right here. So we got to understand that this was uh, how Lucifer was created. But the best answer is this, concerning prophecy, a lot of people now, this is very eye-opening concerning biblical interpretation. So I'm going to give you a big bonus right here. Ready? This is going to open up the floodgates, and you can find a lot of nuggets. When it comes to prophecy, you got to understand this. This is timeless. So when it is timeless, when God speaks in prophetic language, he'll a lot of times use present tense. But when he's speaking in the present tense, he's not speaking right now. A lot of times he will be speaking as right now, but it can be referring to the future or even to the past. So here's my point right here. When Ezekiel has this prophetic vision, it is very possible to say that through this prophecy of these four cherubims, Ezekiel was looking somewhere at the past where Lucifer used to be in his beautiful, perfect form, uh, serving God around the throne. Is that how prophecy works? Well, look at Revelation chapter 1. Uh, look at verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this what? Prophecy. So this book is about prophecy. Now, what will this book contain? And keep those things which are written therein, right? Things in this prophecy. What will the things cover? Ah, look at verse 19. Write the things which, look at this, thou hast seen past tense, and the things which are present, and the things which shall be hereafter, future. That's what prophecy is. It covers past, present, and future. So we got to understand this. This is very possible that what Ezekiel saw was Lucifer in his positive, uh, good form, sinless state before he fell. So that's possibility number one. Now, Possibility number two, we'll turn to the book of Zechariah. We're going to turn to the book of Zechariah. What's important to understand, which some people do not think about, is that sometimes when people have prophetic visions and they see certain 
angelic or spiritual creatures, they automatically assume it must be positive. That's something you got to not think. That can be a dangerous thinking because sometimes when God gives prophetic visions concerning certain celestial, angelic, uh, alien creatures, etc., not all of them are positive. Some of them are negative. For example, here's an easy example. An easy example is the book of Daniel. Daniel saw in his prophetic vision spiritual creatures and beasts rising up out of the sea. Were they positive creatures? No, they were definitely negative. One of them is actually going to be the Antichrist kingdom. So that's not positive right there. So if we can believe something satanic within that prophetic vision, what's hard to believe concerning about Lucifer? within that prophetic vision. Sometimes the evil creatures can be with the angelic creatures in the same vision, you gotta understand. Sometimes evil creatures can be with the good creatures in that same vision. I mean, you gotta think about this. Michael the archangel is going to fight Satan the dragon at Revelation chapter 12, which is a prophetic vision. It's the same vision where evil and good is in the same vision right there. So you got to understand that fact. Let's look at Zechariah chapter 5, chapter 5. And then we're going to look at chapter 5, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 5 and verse 7. So notice right here that in Zechariah chapter 5, that within prophecy, there can be an evil and good creature. There can be evil and good creatures within prophecy the same prophecy. So thus, just because the ox can be the bad guy, does, uh, and then the three are the good guys, doesn't make this guy the good guy. So let's look at Zechariah chapter 5, and then we will read verse 5. Then the angel that talked with me went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes, and see what is this that goeth forth. So notice right here we get a positive good creature here, the angel. But now look at this. Look at verse 7. And behold, there is lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. Well, she must be a good creature. No, look at verse 8. And he said, this is what? Wickedness. And he cast into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I uh, up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Uh, notice in verse 11, they're carrying it to the land of Shinar. Shinar, uh, just a bonus right here when you compare with Genesis. Where is that? Babylon. Uh, very interesting right there. So these female creatures, kind of like succubi or whatever you want to call them, are referred to as evil creatures in this passage. So you'll notice right here that we see evil and good creatures mingled within the same prophecy. So that doesn't make uh, this guy the good guy, you understand. Another thing is this. So here's the third one. So let's build up the evidence right here. Now let's assume this. Let's assume for argument's sake, now I argue differently, but me, I want to be open to all sides of the argument. Amen. That's the type of pa uh, that's the type of pastor that your pastor is, is that he wants to make sure that he gives you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. Okay, so personally, I talk to you that the calf is different from the ox. That's what I believe and I teach that. But then let's say for argument's sake, these are the same creatures. Let's say for argument's sake, that the calf is the same being as the ox. It doesn't change the fact that there is a fifth cherub and that Lucifer has to be the ox. It doesn't change that fact. How so? Look at Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Look at Revelation chapter 4. Look at this passage right here. There, was there were undoubtedly five cherubims. And the fifth one has to be the ox. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Well, why do you say that, Pastor? The reason why is this is because look at what's going on in Revelation chapter 4. Verse 7, And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So notice there were the four cherubims right here. Calf, man, eagle, lion. And let's say this calf is the ox at Ezekiel chapter 1. 
So let's assume that Ezekiel 1 and Revelation 4 are the same creatures. Well, that doesn't mean Satan is a fifth cherub and he's the ox. No, it still argues that. Why? Because you still got four good creatures here. And Lucifer, go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28. What is Lucifer called? He's called a cherub. So then what are you going to do? You got four cherubs. He's a cherub. That's a bad guy. What are you going to do about that? So there is no doubt, see, that you still have to argue a fifth cherub. Look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Look at verse 14. Thou art the what? Anointed cherub that coverest. This is Satan because of verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So this is referring to Satan. Now notice what he's called. This is a key why we call him the ox. He is called cherub, right? Is that correct? All right, compare that with Ezekiel 10 and Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10. The title is important. What is he called? He's called a cherub. That's his title. That's what he's called. Now look at Ezekiel 10. And in Ezekiel chapter 1. Notice in Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kibar. This is by the river of Kibar. And he sees four creatures. What are these four creatures? Verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, the face of a lion on the right side, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Okay. Right? Ox, man, eagle, lion. Right? Now look at chapter 10. Look at this. Look at the wording. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 14. And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of an ox. Is that what it said? No, it said cherub. And the second face was the face of a man. The third, the face of a lion. The fourth, the face of an eagle. See that? So, see, he's called cherub. So, he, because he's called cherub, the Bible calls cherub a what? Ox. Thus, Lucifer is the ox. Now, some people still have a problem with this because what they would like to say is this, is that, well, Satan, uh, I believe more that he covers the uh, aquatic reptilian class. So then that's why they'll probably say that his head is more like a fish rather than the ox. That's what they'll be thinking. But you got to understand this. We do believe Satan covers the aquatic reptilian because these four classes are covered with all kinds of creatures in our world. The only ones that are missing are aquatic reptilian animals. In plainer words, cold-blooded animals. All of these are warm-blooded in science, but this is cold-blooded right here. So he covers cold-blooded animals. Makes sense. He's a cold-blooded creature, hence. Now, aside from that fact, okay, because I already taught all that before, so I'm not going to get over it. But aside from that fact, you got to realize that, yes, he is aquatic reptilian, but what does Bible call a reptile? Look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. It's connected. You understand that the, that the ox is connected with the reptile, the snake. Genesis chapter 3, and then we'll read... Verse 14, the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, so he's speaking to the snake, reptilian, the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all what? Cattle. cattle. See that? So he is within that category of the cattle right here. So it doesn't change that fact. Not only that, you got to understand this. Satan, uh, this cherub is a very superb creature. That makes him unique. Now, when you think about it, when you look at this, doesn't Satan cover the lion as a roaring lion? Devils are likened to birds. And then he comes as an angel of light, so he comes in as a man. So then he's called the ox. Isn't he a unique class anyway? So, see, it doesn't change that fact. He's a very unique class. He's a unique cherub. That's why you, he is so unique. You've got to realize this. Michael the archangel doesn't even dare to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. So this is undoubtedly a totally different class of angelic creature. 
Lucifer is a totally different class right there.